oopsie, had a little issue with my tiger rod. That's not good. Got to glue that baby back on. The Triton 100G. Do you know this thing comes in all kinds of flavors and versions? Bet you didn't know that. Toughest reel I've ever owned. I'll show you. Welcome to the Wolf Den. And as you see, I have the reels in question in front of me. So I finally got what I've been wanting to do and is to show you some variations of basically old school people like me called the Shimano Triton. The true name for it today is like this one. The Shimano TR100G. TR, I guess, pretty much stands for Triton. 100 is the size. These come in 200s. I've got a few, but that's not what I'm talking about. Because no one I know, or in my position as a Northeast Florida charter fisherman, has the need for a 200. Not if you're, if you're sporting the braid. If you're sporting braid, you don't really need a 200. I don't understand why every cat fisherman in the world thinks he needs it. They just don't. I mean, compared to what can be caught on just this reel. All right, this is the standard. This is what's on Shimano's website right now, is the Shimano TR100G or 200G. It's just a little wider of a reel. That's it. Everything's the same. But... Look at even the variations here. This has, if you can see it, kind of a gold writing on it. Okay, it's very faded here, but it said Triton. The brand new ones will not say that. The absolute brand new ones right out of the box will not, I don't believe it does not say Triton down here. It says, like this one, Shimano. They kind of phased out the Triton name. But I'm glad they've kept at least sort of this going. There's Triton right there. I believe he's, he's father of Poseidon. That's who Triton was in Greek mythology. Here you go, you got a Japanese reel company, Shimano, and they're using names from Greek mythology. Kind of interesting. Okay, so let's say if you went and bought a brand new one right now, it would pretty much look exactly like this. The newer ones are not going to say down here, product of Japan. The brand new ones are going to say product of Malaysia. All graphite, star drag, level wind reel. But take notice, 4.3 to 1 gear ratio. That's what these have. They are a simple, simple reel. That's the reason I like them. These remind me of my boat. No glitz, no glamour, they just get the job done. That's what my boat's all about, is pretty much just that. No glitz, no glamour, we're just out to get the job done. A star drag here, right, it turns, you've got the spool release, you let that go, the handle does not auto-engage. You have to flip the lever. And then the reel's now engaged. 
literally a bulletproof design. These are a bulletproof designed reel. The, whatever they're made out of, if they're graphite, I mean, what is that? I mean, you know, that's a very thrown around general term. No bearings. You've got a bronze bushing here, and you've got a bronze bushing where the pinion here goes into the gear side of the reel. And I'm going to show you a little bit about this coming up, so stick with me. Spool centering knob right here to center the spool. Nothing fancy. Um, the spool release. A small handle. But believe it or not, stainless steel, small, it gets the job done. Um, graphite, non-clicking, nothing clicks, nothing does anything, star drag. A level wind, just your basic level wind. Never gets hung up, it just works. So that is if you went and bought one immediately right now today this is basically what it would look like it would it would say this on top here ball bearing drag that's because there is a roller bearing over here sitting on top of very simple drag stack but this thing can produce it's at least 18 20 pounds of drag all you'd ever really need the average person you know Cat fishermen, whatever, fishermen, saltwater, coastal fishermen. I've bought them, fished with these offshore, caught red snapper and stuff like that, just fine. So there is our benchmark, because these came in multiple different flavors. Prior to this one, to the best of my knowledge, and you will see this, hunting these up, you will see some of these where it's going to say 100 GT. I really cannot find a difference between this reel and a GT. So that was a model year. But most importantly, I wanted to go to an even older model. Remember, these, the gear ratio, is 4.3 to 1. Well, back in the 90s, early 90s, late 80s possibly, they came out with the exact same thing. And this one now is called the Super High Speed. And it's called the Speedmaster 100 GT. The key words here is Speedmaster. And the reason being is the Speedmaster has a 5.2 to 1 gear ratio. And I can tell you honestly, spooling these reels up, one right next to another, the one with the 4.3, the one with the 5.2, putting the line on them in my, over here on the side of my bench, I have my Daiichi Seiko line recycling spooling machine from Japan. Got videos about it. Just type in Daiichi Seiko line recycler. When I'm putting line on these, I can notice the 5.2 to 1 is that much faster. And that's the reason these become desirable. I got it listed on the bottom here, but this is, a, of course, made in Japan. Says Speedmaster, super high speed here on the side. That is a difference. That doesn't stop there. Here's a difference because the spool retainer or the, or the handle nut retainer is different. Right? This one goes around it. This one goes over the top of it. They had a metal ring down in here, just a beauty ring kind of thing. Not that much different as far as the star goes. Metal, metal handle release knob. 
metal. So these have been cheapened over the years. If you consider going plastic, going graphite over metal, cheapening. I do. I do. These reels have gone up in price all the time while they're cheapening them down. All right. So this one is a bit different with the hardware that's on it and all. Here is another difference. The paw cap down here that runs the level one. Plastic paw cap. They're sort of a pain in the butt because they can split, especially if somebody gets line wrapped around it right there and they pull on it and it'll snap that cap. Well, you go back to an older model and metal. You're not snapping that metal right there. Metal. I like the, the fact that on these models where things get used a lot, this handle, metal. Down here, the, this is a real business end of a, of a level wine reel, folks. Metal. But that's not all. Okay, remember that? I said Speedmaster, right? Non Speedmaster, just regular. Five point, what was it? 5.2, 4.3 to 1 gear ratio. All right, these are all 100 series type reels. Then, they had the Speedmaster, and I'm sure you, this is an old reel, so it's hard to read. Exactly like that one over there, Speedmaster TSM 100 FS, Fighting Star. This was sort of something that didn't last long with these reels. And it was an attempt to make these reels where you can have a preset drag pressure. I'm not a hundred percent all with it because of the fact I don't want heavy drag, I want light drag because I'm using these for float rig fishing and I want light, right? Because I'm fishing for speckled sea trout and they have a delicate mouth and I don't want the drag to ever be able to be too tight. So what, I, what you do here is this knob, which is the fighting, part of the fighting system here, fighting star drag, you can adjust this by pushing in and going back or forward, back or forward. And what that is basically doing is it's locking the star. Like I can go back now, but I can't go forward. And that's that's essentially what it is. And if you tighten it up, you go and you tighten it up, and you can only go back now, but you can't go any more forward. Right? So I mean, I wouldn't worry yourself over that. This was sort of a bit gimmicky and it didn't last long. They had this on some of the other reels. They had these on the Shimano Speedmaster reels. They had them on some others. And I actually even remember having some type of Shimano reel. Was it a Shimano? No, it was, I think, a Garcia Ambassador that you preset the drag back then. You preset the drag and you reeled this way for 
the highest drag pressure, but then you could let a fish run by moving the handle a quarter turn or half turn backwards. Boy, did that screw up a bunch of charter customers of mine. My God, did that screw them up. So let's, I, I got rid of those reels right, right away. So see how light that drag is, super light right now. So what I want is, I want to tighten that up. We can go back and it's nothing, nothing. But then we can go forward and that's as tight as it'll go. You can't go. You can push it all you want, but you can't make it any tighter. And that's what I want. That's what I want. Now let me show you a little bit uh, difference between these when it comes to overall quality and what you're getting. Remember now, old. These are old. Speedmasters, these are old. These just TR100Gs, where it says TR100Gs, these are the new versions. So I've got the same reel here, one without the Fighting Star, one with the Fighting Star. Actually, I've got two with the Fighting Star, and I use these for float rig fishing because I don't want anybody to ever be able to tighten up the drag when they've got a big trout on, on a float rig. So, if you don't know what a float rig is, it's where we take a live shrimp with a float and a heavy weight and a stopper knot, and you set your depth and you drift the live shrimp in the current. And speckled trout kind of feed up, you put your bait about a foot or two off the bottom, and they pull the float down or redfish or whatever, in good current, deeper water, and it's a way of covering ground over structure without ever getting hooked up on the bottom, snagged on the bottom. So let's dive into these inside here just to take a look. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the insides of if you went and you bought one today. What basically does it look like? And I'm, even though this is an older one of today's version, this is actually a little bit older, all right? But it's still got everything that the new ones have, I believe, all right? So let's start off with how easy it is to pop these dudes loose. I mean, we're not talking any micro screws here. Big screws that bite into the graphite. All right, you got your side plate here where your clicker is. The only people interested in clickers from I know are kitty cat fishermen. Why? Oh, why? Don't they ever see their rod bend over? Or is they're too busy doing something else? Eating? I don't know. I never use a clicker because I, I always pay attention to my rods. All right, so there you go. Let's pull this off. Spool's coming right out with it. It's an all aluminum spool. Nothing super duper here. Stainless shaft. Here's what makes these reels today. You go buy them today. This is what makes them literally bulletproof. Bronze bearing. This sits down in there. Bronze bearing. It's not a ball bearing. Ball bearings aren't always cracked up to what they should be because of the fact that if you if you're not a high do your maintenance kind of guy 
or if you're like like I got one of these used and I opened it up and what was it slap full of sand slap full of sand well if that was bearings then you'd be having a real issue I do not mind these these aren't casting super casting reels these are dropping to the bottom fishing in the current pitching them out we're not doing long distance casting competitions with these reels yes you can go right on eBay from HP bearings and a couple other people and you can buy a bearing that'll go in there you can buy a ceramic you know bearing to go in there if you want me I'm not doing all that all right so there you go there's the side plate here is a little bronze piece that sits over there another bronze that's like the race Okay, this goes in here. Got a lot of some oil in there. It goes and sits in there, and it's like the race on a bearing. There it is. You can hear it. It snaps right in. All right, so that you don't ever want to lose that. And. There's the bearing right there. The only other bearing in this reel is right here. You got a roller bearing for the handle. I, I'm pretty certain, pretty certain. Now, I've had these in parts so many times that I can't even remember. I just know how they go in. But let me let me grab the schematic here because I want to make sure I'm not telling you a story here. Here's the schematic of this exact reel. The only bearing in this entire reel is right there. Right there. Part number 56 it looks like. No, five nine six. That's so. That's such small print. I'd have to get out a magnifying glass. But there's not one bearing in this reel except for right there. I don't see any bearing in the stacks here of washers or anything like that. So that is the reason why this reel is so bulletproof, in my opinion. All right. Just a bulletproof reel. Now let's take a look at a Speedmaster. Remember, an older version of this, but 5.2 to 1 gear ratio. So let's pop this one apart. I commonly take these apart all the time. I mean, it's just something, they're easy to maintain, and all I use is oil. And I found an oil that I'm really liking for inside these reels, and I'm going to show it to you as soon as I get this side plate off. You know, when I say I like something, and somebody's like, oh, well, you're, you're, you shouldn't be using that, or you shouldn't be doing this, you know what? Make your own video. I'm using it because I like it. This is what I'm using inside my reels. Hops Elite Gun Oil. Superior lubrication and corrosion pr pr protection. Repels dirt and carbon. I've got this, and then I've got the Hops kind of all-purpose, just lubricating oil in a spray can. Very easy to find. Many times you can find these at the shelf of any Academy Sports, your local sporting goods store, and even Wally's World every once in a while. So we got the side plate off here. Ooh, look at that. It's got a bronze bushing. Bronze bearing right there. Okay, let's take out the spool. 
Uh-oh. There's a bearing on this side. And it's about to pop out. All right, so now there's no race inside there. See that little brass part right there? Nothing in there. All right, so the spools are the same. This one has that little brass piece. Like I said, it's like a race that goes on there. Now this one came with a bearing inside. So now this one has not only a bearing here, it has a bearing here. And it's 5.2 to one gear ratio. This is an original out of the box. And let's take a look at what the box actually says. Isn't that funny how they're throwing around this GT. All right, there's the box. Super high speed retrieve. For back then in the 90s or late 80s, early 90s, 5.2 to 1 was on a simple reel like this, a high speed reel. Level one, now, I mean, gear ratios are up to nine to one, right? Here we go. Super high speed, strong, lightweight graphite frame, ball bearing, titanium drag. Hmm. Two stainless steel ball bearings. So what that meaning is, you've got the bearing, here for the handle, basically. They call that the drag bearing. And then you've got the bearing here. Then, if you want to get all skippy and get all fancy schmancy, you can buy a bearing and fit it right in there too. But the reason that these are desirable for me, I use the 4.2 to one or 4.3 to one gear ratio. That's all about for just bottom fishing. And then I like to use my Speedmaster versions float rig fishing because even I have an old video that I used with another graphite reel and they stopped making it. You know, these companies really, really start to piss me off when they make something that's worthy. Like the reason I've got 28 or so of these reels and I'm not stopping here is because I'm afraid Shimano is going to discontinue them. I really am. So I go like, if I like something, I get a lot of it. And you have to almost be that way today. But Shakespeare of all the companies in the world, I wouldn't use, I really have no use for any of their reels. Everything's kind of fresh water, okay? Small kids reels, that type of stuff. Well, they made a small graphite reel called an ATS 15G, a graphite reel that was five to one gear ratio. And at the same time, when you flick the lever back and you turn the handle, it auto engaged and it was perfectly good for float rig fishing, for catching trout. I mean, trout are not sea trout. I don't know if, if you know, who's going to be watching this in the future. But sea trout aren't like your giant fighters. You know, they're not. It's the point about sea trout fishing in Northeast Florida is the hunt. Literally, the catch is just keeping them on the hook. Very similar to flounder fishing. They love to get off the hook because they've got delicate mouths. Flounder even have a pretty delicate mouth around their jawbone. So, I even had, maybe I'll put it in a video description. I've got numerous videos where I discuss simple graphite reels 
Maybe I'll put them all in the video description for you to take a look at where I'm comparing a Shimano to, say, a um, Shakespeare ATS-15G, okay? They discontinued them. They made a 15, a 20, and a 30. The 15 was this size or a tad smaller, and it was perfect. And what did I do? I got all, I got all fancy. I eventually got rid of those because I bought Daiwa Saltists. Well, if you're a subscriber, if you watch any of my channels, I just sold my 10 Daiwa Saltists because they were almost too nice. So I want to keep everything on the level here. I bottom fish with these reels and I wanted to... Um, Float rig fish with these reels. So that's the reason why I got rid of my saltists. Great reel. Fantastic reel. Kind of heavy in the hand. Great reel. But for me, I wanted all one across the board. It's kind of like the military, you know. Uh, you know, everything's OD green, right? Everything. Kind of, that's, that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to keep everything the same. So there's a little bit of differences between hardware on the reels, metal, an additional bearing in this one, bushings just in this one, plastic here, plastic here, or graphite. Um, 4.3 to 1, 5.2 to 1, or even getting into an older one that has the fighting star. Very difficult to find these that aren't beat to a pulp. And you better be ready if you ever decided to take one of these and press it into service. You better be ready to go through it with a fine tooth comb. Because you, there's endless issues that can happen with these reels because they're old. I mean, you're looking at a 20 year old reel. Who knows how many hands were, it was in, but I'll give you a key feature. If you can, and you're not gonna know this or not, it's a shot in the dark, is if you're ever finding any of these reels, these older Shimano Tritons as I call them, or Speedmasters, or a Speedmaster GT, or a Triton GT, or a TR100 GT. They got all, Shimano went crazy with the names. See if it's coming possibly from, you know, an original owner, and if that original owner is in mid-America. That means it's gonna be coming from being freshwater usage. So there's a little bit difference in these reels so now you know there's a little progression and the end of the progression is cheapified but the cheapified still is an absolute workhorse of a reel that you can abuse just like the ones you'd be buying used they've been abused look at this one just for instance it's like a mouse has chewed right there. Let's see. Look right here. Right there on the edge of that level wine plastic. That is perfectly straight, nice. There's nothing wrong with it. Because I said this is a newer version, but an older used reel, not by me, but by somebody else, there's grooves all in there like it was gnawed by a mouse, but that really isn't that. It's grooves from somebody's braided line or something on there. You do not know what the previous 15 people were doing with it. So, I mean, that's just a little forensic study of these. So. Thanks for watching. I know this is a long video. I'll see you on the next one.